Good evening. Thank you for joining us for service tonight. If you'll join us singing, Come Thou Almighty King. Delta Triangle, what that means is it's a doxological or uh, praise to God verse, and so those are ones when we do uh, traditionally stand. So again, thank you very much for that. Uh, a couple of announcements to make for you. I'm Pastor Lochran. Welcome to anybody who might be uh, viewing us live right now. This is the service that we live stream uh, and then also record. So those of you who are here, you're being very helpful uh, for the people that are watching us. You're in many ways leading worship for them. Uh, I do have a few things I wanted to announce for you, especially since we have some visitors here, so welcome. Uh, most of you received our email communication. That's how we're communicating right now. Uh, that let you know that we paused school uh, over the course of the last week, actually for 11 days, so into the middle of this upcoming week. Uh, we had a large number of quarantines. Now, quarantines don't mean uh, that people have COVID. They mean a few people have COVID and then others uh, have been exposed to them. I can tell you nobody is real sick, um, but having said that, we want to take extra care that we're not passing this on. And, and we got to the point where we had enough staff uh, that were quarantined that we really felt that we wouldn't properly educate uh, our scholars. So they got online and homework and we'll resume live school again this Wednesday. So do keep that in mind. Uh, we will be asking that if you come on campus during the school day, uh, we're going back to wearing masks now. So if you're coming to campus during the school day, uh, please be sure uh, to wear a mask when you come. We will continue to have our, our activities, our OWLS Bible study that meets uh, during the day, that meets in a space where our scholars don't go. Uh, we're doing virtual chapel again, so that means they're not coming into the uh, sanctuary either. They have their lunch outside, those types of things. Uh, so do keep all of that in mind. One last thing, just bear with us. Um, Two of the people who are on quarantine are our school administrative assistant and our church administrative assistant. You know, that does make life very difficult uh, for, um, for some of us who really lean heavily on them. That's why there's no prayer page this week or, or Bible readings this week. So that's why you didn't see those when you came in. 
All right, that is everything. At this point, I'll invite all of us to stand as we call upon our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Your testimonies are wonderful, therefore my soul keeps them. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Keep steady my steps according to your promise and let not my iniquity have dominion over me. Oh Lord. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Make your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. of all that is just and good, nourish in us every virtue, and bring to completion every good intent, that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The 14th Sunday after Pentecost, the Old Testament reading is from Deuteronomy. Now, O Israel, listen to the statutes and just decrees that I am teaching you, and do them, that you may live and go and take possession of the land that the Lord, the God of your fathers, is giving you. You shall not add to the word, nor I command you, nor take away from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you. 
Keep them and do them, for that will be your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, who, when they hear all the statutes, will say, Surely this is a great nation, as wise and understanding people. For what great nation is there that God so near to us as the Lord our God is to us? Whenever we call upon him, and what great nation is there that has, has statutes and just decrees so righteous as all this law that I set before you today? Only take care and keep your soul diligently, lest you forget the things that your eyes have seen, and lest they depart from your heart all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Ephesians 6. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against the flesh and the blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over these present darkness, and against the spirit's forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may able, be able to withstand in the evil day and have, having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness. And as for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, Take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit and with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all the preservation, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mysteries of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, and I might declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see? that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled. Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord.
probably know this, but I'm going to rehearse it for you a little bit anyway. God's people of old were held captive in Egypt for 400 years before their release. Then, after they got away from that, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years because of their grumbling against God. Some 800 years later, they spent two generations in Babylon as punishment for other sins that they committed. Would they ever learn? Closer to home, we are in the midst of experiencing a surreal virus wandering. How long it's going to last, no one can really accurately predict, but it will end one day. And it's only after that that we can truly count the toll that it's taking. With a little distance, we'll be able to see which decisions were wise, which weren't, what worked, what didn't. And honestly, we'll probably disagree on that even then, too. More importantly, given how poorly we've handled our time of wilderness wandering, I, I think that it's only fitting that we have spent the last two weeks in those first few verses of Mark chapter 7. As Pastor Kyle told you last week, these verses are a portion of the second gospel where the quote-unquote gospel that we long for, the gospel that we normally come to church to hear, that which promises the forgiveness of sins and eternal life in Jesus Christ, that gospel has been noticeably absent from our text. Think about that as we start to consider that portion of God's word for us today. Last week, we heard about an investigation of sorts when some scribes sent out from Jerusalem questioned Jesus about his disciples' behavior. Do you remember it? It's ironic enough that they were upset because they weren't washing their hands properly. Not washing them, according to the tradition of the elders. Predictably, this caused Jesus to lash out against their hypocrisy. You have a fine way of rejecting the commandment of God in order to establish your tradition. Case closed. That is, until the scribes could get Jesus on their own turf, where a rigged jury would find him guilty of a trumped-up charge that led to his death. More about that in a bit. For now, we take up the second part of this particular section, where having dismissed the inquisitors, Jesus addressed the people, and Mark often makes this distinction between the religious leaders and the people each had their own difficulties. So in the first part of the reading, we heard that the leaders broke the law, God's law, by making up their own rules and putting it in the place of God's word. In the second part, we hear that the people had trouble keeping God's law itself. Listen once more to how it went. Jesus said, Hear me, all of you, and understand there is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him. But the things that come out of a person are what defile him. That's the problem. Forget about the crowd of people that Jesus was addressing. And think about us for a moment. That's the problem. In fact, forget about us. And think about yourself. What Jesus is saying here is that it's not what's outside of you. It's not the devil, the cares of the world, your kids, your parents, your boss, 
your teachers, your car, the food that you eat, whatever it is that you drink, the stupid things that your pastor says or does. It's not what's outside of you. No, it's what's here, don't you see? You dear friends in Christ Jesus have a problem with your heart. I I'm sure I'm not saying anything uh, that's uh, really for a great perception for you, that's new for you. Uh, if, if I mention to you how divided our nation has become of late, both of your pastors in Christ have mentioned this from the pulpit. You read about it everywhere. You probably talk about it uh, at the, at, over coffee at work or water at work or however it is that you uh, meet with people. You've heard a lot about that. Well, here it is. All of us act as if it's the other guy's fault. It's phenomena. And I'm here to tell you that so long as this is the case, the divides will continue and they will grow deeper and deeper and deeper. Far, far worse, though, is the truth that all of us come into these divine services, services like this one, in almost any type of church, they start out with a confession of sins. So we confess our sins before God. But do you really believe that you're a sinner? A, a far worse sinner than that group of people that are sitting six feet or more apart from you. A, a, a far worse sinner than the person who hasn't been to church for a while. For whatever reason, all respect to those of you who are there who might think that the people sitting here are far worse sinners than you. Do you think that you're a far worse sinner? Even than the folks that are locked up in the county jail on 49th Street. As Jesus addressed those who would one day be his accusers, and then the crowd of people, along with his own disciples at the start of March, uh, Mark chapter 7, he was addressing a group of people like that. Like you, like me, that. Jesus was speaking to people who all thought that they were without sin, or if they weren't that crass, then they thought that their sins were trivial and insignificant compared to all the good that they were doing. Or, or some of the other people thought, hey, my sins are nothing compared to the sins of that guy over there. Don't buy into that trap. It is beyond a doubt the road to hell. Instead, heed Jesus' words that out of your heart, that old sinful one that is, out of your heart comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. That's me in a nutshell. It's a perfect description. Right there, for certain. Now, if these first few verses, these first 23 verses of Mark, were the only word of God that we had to go by, we'd be pitiful. We'd be lost. We'd be in a world of hurt. That's another thing that our sinful nature does, though, isn't it? We, we take the scriptures and we try to parse them out, and, and we get a little section of this, and, and we don't even think beyond these words, as if they were written to be overanalyzed, analyzed ad nauseum. 
Rather than change our lives from those of sin leading to death towards faith leading to eternal life. It's better always to view the Bible as a great painting, the Mona Lisa. You don't go to the art museum to look at the Mona Lisa, point up to the left-hand corner and say, gee, I wonder what Leonardo da Vinci was thinking when he made that 53rd brush stroke over there in the upper left-hand corner. Look at that. No. You look at the whole. You marvel at his talent. And you wonder what she was thinking. This portion of scripture set before us today is like that. It's a 10 verse snippet out of a spirit filled 16 chapter book which is then a part of a total of 66 others penned by a variety of different human authors at different times, in different places, for different circumstances. There is a context to any portion of the Bible beyond itself. To fail to recognize that is to misread the scriptures. And in case you're wondering what that context is, because you haven't read the whole thing, that's fine. I'll tell you. It's the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the word of God made flesh. In fact, he said this himself on many occasions, but particularly on one occasion. When he was at the pool of Bethesda, outside of Jerusalem. Remember it? He said to a group of people there, you search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life. They were thinking, if I could just keep all of these rules, I would be fine. No, said Jesus. It is these that bear witness about me. In fact, if you were to read past this evening's gospel, you'd get some more of that context. For you see, in the very next verses, Jesus talks to a Gentile woman whose daughter was demon-possessed, and what do you think Jesus did? He attended to that problem post-haste. After all, that's where his heart is, isn't it? He sees human need. And he mercifully deals with it. Further still, if you were to read back from the portions of Scripture just prior to Mark chapter 7, and we have done that in here, you would see Jesus healing the sick, walking on water, having compassion on a crowd that was hungry, and working a miraculous feeding. Finally, if you were to read this gospel through to the end, and in many ways you will, at least if you come to church here, you would see Jesus there, entering Jerusalem, instituting the supper that we will share later in this service, praying for us in the garden, being arrested, beaten, convicted of sin, our sin, dying on the cross for it, buried, and then resurrected, just as he said it would be. We'd also hear, if we were to read forward, that one day he will come again on the clouds and send out his angels to gather his elect from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. And so the wonder of the uncertainty of our world today is that the Lord is using it to sharpen focus on Jesus. Let's face it, folks, what else is there really? That, that's exactly how God is keeping his promise 
to work good in all things through this pandemic and whatever else might be coming down the pike afterwards or in conjunction with it, right? We've got a tropical storm bearing down on the Gulf Coast. We have thousands of people whose lives are at risk trying to leave Afghanistan. We have any number of personal tragedies or concerns taking place in this moment. All these things God uses to sharpen our focus on Jesus. For you, the fact that you are here speaks volumes. The fact that you're watching this right now, giving up an hour of your time on a Saturday evening, speaks volumes. It says to your Lord and to others that your heart has been changed. According to the new nature that God gave to you in your baptism, you do love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, as well as your neighbor as yourself. Despite those moments of stumbling, and we all have them as human beings, God is holding on to you at all times and in all places with the blood-stained hands of his son. There's no breakthrough there. The disease of sin can't break through the forgiveness that Jesus earned. He's holding on to you at all times and in all places. Much like Peter out on that water that we heard about earlier this summer, you are making it through by looking to Jesus, the author and perfecter of your faith, and when you glance away, he grabs you. In him, you have forgiveness. In him, you have life. In him, you have strength. In him, you have hope. So rest assured that he is faithful, and he will guide each and every one of you safely home, all the while working to change your heart to be like his, so that you might have joy for this life. Praise be the holy name of Jesus forever. Amen. Please stand now and join with me in praising God's name in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in... Please be seated.
In our prayers this evening, we do remember uh, all those people who were on the prayer page that we had out last week, but we do have a large number of additions. I'll quickly mention them. For uh, the people who are in Afghanistan and in harm's way there, also especially for our military stationed there, for all people in Ida's pathway, for Juan, uh, to whom death appears to be drawing near, Brittany, Beth, Joyce, uh, the families of Pat Batston, Michael Spinelli, Nancy Rosenberger, and Betty uh, DeJoyas. Let us pray for all the people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. For those elected to serve as our national, state, and local leaders. For those who serve in the military and their families, especially as our nation mourns its casualties from this past week. For those who work in the medical professions in these trying times, and all those in Ida's path, that the Lord would raise his hand and strengthen them all. Lord, in your mercy. For the gift of the Holy Spirit at work in the word of truth that by his direction we would not stray from the way of God's commandments, nor forget the wonderful blessings he has given to us, Lord, in your mercy. For all pastors, deaconesses, and teachers, parents and grandparents, and all who teach the faith, that we may grow in wisdom and the knowledge of God's love in Christ, and that the gospel may continue to spread throughout the world, Lord, in your mercy. For those who struggle with doubt and temptation, that God would assure and deliver them, showing himself a refuge for the powerless and strength for every weakness, Lord, in your mercy. For all in need of health, healing, and mercy, including Jeff, Beth, Kathy, Dave, Jan, Lisa, Annalyn, Harry, Finn, Colleen, Barbara, Ron, Melissa, Yanni, Joe, Saudi, Jacob, Tim, Holly, jo Joy, uh, Mike, Mike, Jeff, Lewis, Brittany, Randy, Greg, Justine, Adrian, Ed, Fritz, Lilani, Heidi, Dallas, Sharon, Juan, Brittany, Beth, Joyce, Cheryl, Alyssa, Jeremy, Yellison, Batson, Spinelli, DeJoyas, and Rosenberger families, and those whom we now name silently before you in our hearts. that the Lord of life would strengthen them with his word of grace to look to him for comfort in the midst of suffering and pain. Lord, in your mercy. For all who commune this night, remembering with thanksgiving the salvation accomplished by Christ's cross, that we may proclaim his death and resurrection with joy as we receive Christ's very body and blood in this holy sacrament for the forgiveness of our sins. Lord, in your mercy. In your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy for your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a reminder at this time of offering, especially with visitors here, that our offering plates are up front. Uh, so if you've brought an offering, you're welcome to deposit those when you come up for communion uh, or come up for a blessing at that time. Uh, or you can go online to our website and use the uh, drop down page for those of you who are visiting with us. Please stand to sing the doxology. <laughs>
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. O oh Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we loud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, teach us to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. The same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And we greet one another with the Lord's peace.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will strengthen and keep you steadfast in the truth, faith, to life everlasting. Go in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament, and we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. serve the Lord.